What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up the sandbar crab fly. This is a pattern a friend sent me a few years back. I uh, was heading to Southern California to fish the surf and said tie me some up. Can't remember whose pattern it is and this may be a variation of it. I don't know. I can't remember. So if this looks like somebody's, let me know and I'll make sure to give them credit. Um, this is an A-Rex hook, an NS-115, uh, the deep streamer. I like this hook because it's got a little bit longer shank. And I tie these up into two fours or sixes. Um, just for size and we've got some Semperfly Nano Silk on the uh, Norvice bobbin here. Um, usually fish these in an 8 aught or a 12 aught and so we'll go ahead and uh, get that started right there on the hook shank. Now um, we're going to be tying in some uh, dumbbell lead eyes for weight on this and if you've never tried or you struggle to tie these in let me show you a little trick here and you can also even use a large on this. I forgot to mention that usually heavy is a little better uh, but for these I want to make sure it's a, not too heavy of a, to cast and so we're gonna if you, you struggle to tie these in let me show you a little trick here I'm gonna pinch the dumbbell eye in my finger so that the middle is exposed and then I'm gonna do uh, two to four wraps just right over the middle while it's still on top of the shank and then as I pull down right there it's gonna naturally twist one way and I let it go the way it wants to go and then I do a few two or three securing wraps and then you'll notice it's on the top of the shank at an angle and so I'll go the opposite direction and as I do that it's naturally shifting it to be perpendicular and you can see this is a pretty easy method to do it it just kinda lets the eyes go the way it wants to go and then of course I do a bunch of um, crisscross and over under wraps to secure it um, I probably do overkill but there's one time I was fishing one of the, uh, a clouser I believe and all of a sudden the dumbbell eyes were gone and I was like what the crap so now I really secure my eyes um, probably a little overkill but I don't want to lose them partly because that day that fly was doing really well and then it wasn't getting down where I needed it so advance your thread back to the bin and then we'll go ahead and we'll glue these eyes in place I'm just using a regular uh, Gorilla Glue this is the super glue the gel takes a little bit longer to cure up and so I just put a little dab there and then I'll let it soak into the thread as we're advancing and working through the rest of our uh, our fly now just be mindful that glue will be wet or a little bit tacky here for a bit and so uh, try not to have materials going to it now for the uh, bugginess and shuck and hot spot we're going to be using the um, these are these voodoo fibers and we'll take about eight or ten off and cut them um, half the length to the full length and then I will take them and fold them in half and then fold them in half again so we have roughly a dense uh, bit of uh, bugginess here that's uh, got a nice barring to it and uh, these fibers are really cool it almost feels like waxy hair I don't I don't know how to describe it if you haven't used them before but the key is just to get a nice little tying point here, a nice butt end, and um, we'll go ahead and secure that with a couple wraps and then advance our way up through the shank, just securing those down and binding them down to the, the hook shank. And so we'll clean that up on our way back down. And then to keep these clumped together, uh, what I do is I do some under wraps and then go right over it under and over usually th two but usually three to five or six wraps will give you take your your fibers or whatever material you're using and put it into a nice ball and clump and you can also manipulate how tall it comes off by doing that as well and so um, a good rule of thumb because we're using proportions here is I look at the hook gap and that's about how long I trim these from the bend of the hook back and we'll just go ahead and trim those off and it almost looks like a, a, a tag in there a hot spot tag in now we have here a whiting farm this is a 4b hen this is from the shoulder and I believe this is a like a golden tan we're just trying to match the uh, sandbar tan and we'll uh, go ahead and trim this off and prep it and get the tip ready to tie in and we'll, we'll just tie in that whole tip you can cut it out if you want but I'm just gonna secure that whole tip in um, is we're, we're not adding too much bulk there in my opinion and so you may disagree but do whatever you want there trim it out and then just preen these fibers back and we'll we're gonna use this whole feather here to create a nice dense um, partly what we're doing here is trying to uh, match the, the the shell of the sandbar fly we're doing but at the same time uh, covering up some of that that, that red uh, voodoo fibers because we want it to just be hints of flash hints of a hot spot and hints of uh, bugginess and uh, 
So that's kind of what we're doing here is we're, we're covering that up with this, uh, this hackle feather. And so we'll just continue to wrap utilizing the whole feather and we'll uh, get ready to uh, tie it off and just back our thread back and do about two or three wraps to secure that stem in place. And minimizing the amount of fibers you trap down is also key and also not wasting material but we can see that's going to give a nice good coverage especially when it gets wet it's going to really fan around those that that voodoo fiber and act just for what it's intended really nice there really like how that went all right now next we got to tie in the the feelers and so we're going to um, basically I have here some um, centipede legs that I'm going to be using for this and these are uh, I, th I think you can use silly legs, you can use a whole bunch of materials. I think they even sell actual um, rubber legs for this. These are just some I use for hoppers and such and it's a stiff nice rubber um, leg that holds up really well and so I'm just going to trim one in half and I'm going to bend it around my uh, thread here um, making sure the tips somewhat align. We're going to be trimming these a little bit shorter but you don't want to have one be you know, half an inch long and the other be four inches long. And I'm going to stretch it because we don't want to add a lot of bulk by having it not stretched. And then I'm going to pull them back on each side so that they're they're coming out. And that that hackle feather will also help to poof them out. But really, what's going to do, what's going to get them out really nice, is our our wraps around that last thread point because that will kind of splay them out. Now. I kind of want them to go down because this is going to be riding hook point up and so if I have them coming towards the point of the hook they're naturally going to bow out and that's kind of what I want to be going on and if you've looked at a um, sandbar they actually kind of almost come straight up at a so right here this isn't even a good enough angle but uh, you know naturally they're going to be kind of a little bit longer than what we have going on in the back right now and then I take just a red sharpie and I, I hit it as I stretch it. I'm hitting it um, in the white spots. And you can also do some in the black that just aren't as visible. But I'm um, speckling these. And that's kind of my trick so that I don't have to purchase um, some saltwater uh, leg specific. And I'm basically getting the same effect there. And we'll do the same to the other leg. Making sure to pull it tight and really just lay down a nice thick red. Because remember, it's stretched out as you apply that red, so when you when it decompresses, it's going to be perfect. And like I said, don't worry too much about the tips because we're going to be cutting these um, a little bit shorter, and so that's just wasted time. Now, um, for the legs, uh, we're going to be using some ultra chenille in a tan. I believe this is a, a, a worm color that I have, and I do this a little different. I'm going to add an extra. A uh, little step here to kind of cover up the uh, the bottom of this, but we're going to cut off a strip here that's roughly you know seven inches. I'm just going to tie it in right here at the back of this where we're, all our material is, and then I will uh, fold it over and measure and cut it about uh, half an inch longer than the eye, maybe an inch, and that way uh, we have something to hold on to, and this will make sense later. And now for the legs, I'm cutting them roughly the overall length of the uh, the hook shank here from the, the back of the bend to the eye. And we'll cut them all about even. If you want, you can trim them up to be perfect in length, but uh, we'll just uh, take those in our hand um, and splay them out so that they're uh, kind of fanning out. And we're going to basically burn the ends um, now uh, so that I'm not going to be burning any of the uh, the materials that we've tied on and I just dab it just real quick and then pinch it with my finger. Uh, don't get into fly tying if you're not afraid of getting burned by a lighter. That's all I can say. And this isn't hot. I've had them stick to my fingers and your your hands heal. But then again I don't have a, a desk job so maybe my hands are more calloused. So just burn both sides um, and that way we're one creating a pointy leg similar to what you're going to see on the um, actual um, uh, bug we're trying to imitate or crab we're trying to imitate and two you're, you're, you're increasing the durability of that chenille and now I'll take one and I'll basically fold it in half or not sorry not fold it in half but tie it at the halfway point to the top of the shank 
and then I'll figure it to the other side and then I always check to make sure it's about even and then as I, I know it's even I'll do one more crisscross so over each way and then I kind of pull them back and do some nice thread wraps right up to them two to five wraps right there and then we'll advance dividing between that leg and the the eyes we need to get two more legs in and so we'll do right there same process uh, do your first initial crisscross check to make sure they're uh, even and then go ahead and do one more crisscross and then pull them back and do two to five wraps right there in front to really secure those in and then do the last leg so fold it you tie it in at the halfway point and then um, do your crisscrosses and bam we got our legs and these are super fun to tie in because they're going to be in our way the rest of the, the fly no I'm joking that's not too bad but same process make sure you get those wraps in front to really secure those down and then uh, we are golden now to uh, make our, uh, our the rest of our body and uh, in, in, in all essence the shell as well so work your way back through this, um, going over crisscrossing to right behind, right in front of the first legs we tied in. So between that first leg and the dumbbells where you want your thread to be. Now we're going to be using for the body and the shell of this is, uh, this is some McFly foam in a flat, flats tan I believe is the color. And I basically am pulling off a chunk of this that's uh, roughly the diameter of a sharpie. Um, I try to just grab what naturally splays apart. I'm, I'm terrible at getting this stuff apart and forming perfect circles, um, but I do my best. And so I'm going to cut that and set it aside. And we're also going to be using a secondary color. Um, the secondary color we're going to use as a, uh, a light blue here. And you don't want to, uh, sorry, baby blue, you don't want to pull this uh, so that you are getting off the same size chunk I basically want to half it so now we're talking like a big pen worth and we'll just do the same thing and cut it right there and you can see the blue versus the tan in size is about is about half not as dense and then we'll put them together and I'm gonna cut these roughly the same length as we did our legs about an inch and a quarter or you can use the overall length of the shank and these are going to be trimmed and we're wasting a little bit of material here but makes it a little bit easier to work with a little bit easier to tie in as well and a little bit easier to trim if you have something to hold on to and so do the same process here and once you've trimmed them all um, kind of take that tan and we're gonna basically make it into a, a hot dog and if you got some weird ones like this just roll it up it doesn't it's gonna make sense and be real nice but you can see we're basically forming that making it like a hot dog kind of cupping it around and I guess I should call it the hot dog because it does look like I'm putting a blue hot dog in a bun and then I tie it in by pushing it into the hook point there and then avoiding the legs go up and over in a straight line and then come down on the other side making sure not to trap those legs on the other side I'll visually check to make sure that I've got tan showing on each side in equal proportions because it's very easy for that baby blue to walk over on you and then I'll, I'll tie it down pull it up and then do some nice securing wraps to kind of prop that up roughly I, I, I never count just because I usually use my judgment and you can see about five to maybe ten wraps to kind of get that going back and we want it to stay up and then I'll advance my thread up between the next two legs and we're going to tie in another chunk so you should have uh, three well we had three total chunks there's two left and we'll basically hot dog it and this is where it gets a little tricky and this is you know one of the techniques you learn when doing uh, um, deer hair and, and work and, and stacking it is I'm going to push it from the front back and then make sure I've got that brown on each side and then I will check it before I get it too tight and then tie it down with a second wrap and bam we got that sand tan on each side we kind of I thought I would caught a leg but we're good I think it's just sticking to the 
this uh, McFly foam. It's pretty uh, sticky stuff, especially when you got the chenille. But I'll do that on that last wrap there. I'm really cranking down, and you can see how it wanna, wants to walk around, but we'll fix that right here by pulling it all up and doing those five to 10 wraps right there in front, uh, trying our best not to bugger our, our legs here. And there we go, nice. So, and you'll start to, if you let go and it totally falls flat, then you didn't get enough wraps. That's pretty much how you can judge it. Now we're gonna advance between the leg and the, the dumbbell, and we're gonna do our last chunk. And I've, I've tried it where I've added uh, two more chunks and it's just not necessary. Um, this holds its form pretty well and uh, with these three chunks we're able to get it done in my opinion. And uh, so I'm going to, little trick here, I don't want as much blue in this front one. And so I'm going to take about half of it out and then we will hot dog it and tie it in pulling those fibers back just straight up and over. And right using our dumbbells as our as our gauge there. Check it. And we're golden. So I'll do the second one now. And then I'll advance my uh, thread right there up to the eye and then work my way around those dumbbells. Now on this one I don't do as many wraps right there to build it up because I do want it to go forward and lay flat. And we'll trim it so that it's not covering the hook point or the sorry, the hook eye. But there we tie in our chenille that we had dangling. And that kind of covers up our belly. Um, I've had guys tell me to do this in a hot orange as well, um, but I'm just trying to match the legs. And so we'll go ahead and work our way around that, get two wraps on the back side of the dumbbell, and then we'll pull this uh, chenille over to the hook eye, and then I will do two more wraps to secure that in place. And it also kind of provides a nice little taper to that head as well. So we can trim that out now at this point. And then uh, we're going to uh, first build up our head, and then lastly we will uh, uh, trim this uh, to a bug. Because right now it doesn't, you know, we couldn't catch anything. That hook point is going to not be accessible. So I color this head orange, and be very mindful of that McFly foam. You don't want to really get that orange thread um, onto that at this point because it may absorb some of the color. And then we'll do a secondary uh, wrap with. Um, coloring that orange as well. That's one of the advantages using this white uh, Semperfly Nano Silk. It absorbs the color really well, especially like your oranges and pinks and hot colors. I think it really does that well. And then, um, you know, you can keep white on all the time. So we'll go ahead and whip finish, just a three turn uh, simple whip finish. We're gonna be covering this in some resin here in a minute uh, for durability and we'll snip that out. So we are well almost done with this fly. The last part is the um, one we're going to put a little bit of UV resin here on the bottom before we start trimming that uh, uh, McFly foam. And the reasoning behind that is I, yeah, I want it to kind of bond into that McFly foam. And so when we're pulling on it, we're not actually pulling anything that we don't want to pull. And so I'm just going to put a generous layer. This is the Semperfly No Tack UV. Um, it's really great stuff, especially for shaping and forming and um, really sets up. It absorbs a little bit. Um, it's not quite like a thin and that's not what I want at this point. I want something that's going to be durable, that's going to be dragged along the sand and hold up well. So I'm uh, just basically covering all that. If you get a little bit into the legs that's fine. If you get a little bit into the McFly foam that's fine too. And Then we'll go ahead and make sure our legs are in the positions we want particularly looking at the up and down. Of course, when it gets wet, it's going to move and be totally different, but um, we're trying to help out which way those legs go. And so just go ahead and cure that up 10 to 15 seconds, uh, making sure to cover all areas. And this is going to be a beast of durability now. Now comes the fun, messy part. We need to trim this. And uh, there's no easy way around it. Just make sure you got some good scissors. Um, a little trick is I kind of pull up and measure with my hook eye and start to get that tip so that we don't have to go back and try and clean up around our hook eye and then as I'm trimming this I'm I'm guessing where that hook point is and that's the tricky part you don't want to chomp down on that hook point but I know I've got a wider gap hook and so if I continue where I'm going and then there it's exposed I'm gonna kind of go downwards 
and we'll, we'll continue to shape this. For the sides, I use the lead eyes, and I just basically go straight back. As I'm pulling, I go straight back, and then that way it's, it's almost a perfect little circular shape. And I, for some reason, I don't have that long one over here. I must have pulled too much when I went straight up, but we'll just do the same thing. Just use those lead eyes as your reference, and then trim um, backwards, and then work your way around to kind of match where our top was and it's pretty easy to shape this stuff once you've got your 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 boxed out or you know your rough cut you can always trim more um, later and so it's better to start with the minimal but you can see how that two-tone color just really kind of makes it a little bit fun uh, you can add different color combinations I usually add in some some orange or some green it allows you to go with a a lighter and a darker tans um, yellows and such and uh, this stuff uh, looks like a hard casing shell. It's not going to be flowy like a, a feather or, you know, chenilles or stuff that's going to mat down. This is going to hold its shape and, uh, you know, in a way look like you're gluing a, a nail to it. But um, you can also add a little bit of Sharpie accents. And then I always like to just hit it with the vacuum to see how we're looking. And that's looking pretty good. I got a little bit of fluff here on the other side that I just want to trim up. You can be as OCD with this as you want, but I'm going to trim these uh, feelers roughly a little bit longer, double the length of what I have coming out the back, and that's uh, that's it. Let's get these uh, trimmed up here, just a little bit more of that fluff, and you can hide your legs at this point, making sure not to cut that hackle, and bam, we got a little sand crab here. This thing's uh, a lot of fun. And like I said earlier, you can mix and match all your colors, um, have a lot of fun with it, and you can continue to shape as much as you want. But pretty quick little pattern. Um, I took a little bit more time here than I needed to, but the resin increases durability. It's going to land hook point up. And um, yeah, here, let me, let me see if I think I got some laying right here. Let's grab some of these other color combos that I have um, so that you can see. They just uh, are really fun. I love mixing and matching all these combos. One, because they look cool, but two, you know, it provides different accents. So tie some up, fish them. Hopefully they slay it. See ya.